When it comes to Destiny, I'm one of the most geriatric players in the game. It may not look like it with the way I get obliterated by nearly everything in the game, but believe it or not, this homunculus and its Hot Wheels colors are extremely powerful, able to pull off moves only the best professionals in the game can, with precision and expertise. Moves such as consistently blowing myself up with Gallahorn and vastly undershooting my jumps. Over the course of the years that Destiny has been out, I've spent ages getting my arsenal ready to fight the biggest bads the city has ever seen. But what if we took all that prep work and hard earned equipment, then strip me down to only the barest of essentials, then point me in the direction of Savathun and say, All right, Chuckle Nuts, go kill God. That's right, baby. In today's challenge, I dare to ruin my mental stability even further to appease your sick love of watching me suffer, and pose the question, can you beat the Witch Queen campaign on Legendary using only white gear? This had to have been the most brutal and punishing challenge that I've done yet. And I spent ages firing off a damage Traveler's Chosen and literally every enemy inside of the campaign. I've also been playing Gambit every day, trying to get that Gambit Jade Stone. Now that's saying something, give me the damn shader, Bungie! <laughs> With that being said, let's get into the video. Starting this challenge up has me devolving from my godlike visage to the crusty guy who pees in bus stops, equipping white armor, the Kvostov, stubborn oak, and a green sword, all with their power capped at 1350. Meaning that in the early missions where the level cap sits around that level as well, I stand more than a chance, but as the challenge progresses, my cheeks will be sufficiently clapped. In order to get the true dirty vagrant slash nostalgic experience, I equip the Wanderwing, the first ship you get in Destiny 2's vanilla campaign, and also the Moon Rider Zero, an uncommon sparrow with the steg top speed of slightly faster than walking, bringing back dark memories of the vanilla D2 campaign, where everyone had to walk everywhere, and even when you got into the movement option, you were still disappointed. In an effort to be at least somewhat presentable, I look at the shaders to give myself at least some form of style and achieve this perfection. They say that fashion truly is the end game of destiny, but the only thing I'm truly looking like is the disappointing Hershey squirts of a clown that ate the economy pack of titan crayons. But with my new peak physical form taken, it was finally time to start the arrival. The arrival has me beelining it straight for the combat sections. The first thing I immediately noticed was that I am extremely slow. I usually run as a warlock with the mobility of Usain Bolt if he had no legs, but even then, I can't begin to explain how weighty everything feels. It's not just in my movement speed. These guns take forever to draw due to the fact that each one of them only has one perk. All that aside, however, I was actually feeling pretty confident, as normally in these challenges, I'm usually doing something that takes away my option for multiple damage types. This time, however, I have access to all of my abilities and weapons. This is the beautiful snowball effect of causing me to roll in like an angel of death. I clearly the first area like a navy seal operative, get the finisher on this cabal incinerator, launch myself towards the gun, and almost get overwhelmed by the amount of enemies around me. In this challenge, I take serious damage, a problem that only gets worse as time goes on. But with careful strategic playing, I slap their cheeks silly, clear the inside near the first terminal, and ride my little sparrow for a confidence boost. Because you see, I have an alternative objective during this mission, which is the reason that I'm playing like an absolute turbo sweat. A commenter by the name of Dosi wrote to me in a post where I announced this challenge by saying, Riley, you absolute turd monkey. I already beat this mission doing this challenge flawlessly. To which I say, You listen here, you little shit! I spent 14 hours beating the Witch Queen with only a damaged traveler's chosen. Don't you think for a second that I won't powder your ass like a goddamn donut? Maybe I didn't say like that one at all, but I'll be damned if I don't tighten my cabals and rise to the occasion. If you'd like to show some support, though, eh, drop by their channel. It was a neat watch. That doesn't stop me, however, from getting into a fight with this heavy gunner and almost immediately getting my ass blasted. But with careful planning, I escape and deliver swift, colorful justice. Moving on, I drop a well near this wrench carrying cabal and start a fight club in the middle, spazzing between them all over the arena more than a hunter main who took one point of damage in the crucible. I then advance to the base of the gun, clear out the engineers that hold the power cores and descend into my arch nemesis, slightly angled pipes that have no problem crossing my ankles, but this time I follow the ancient teachings of improvise, adapt, come, and flawlessly enter the engine bay. Inside I stick near the sides, dealing with the minor cabal as quick as I can to create a safe area to fight from. I pop my well right beside the heavy gunner engineer as they are the most dangerous when you take enhanced damage damage, slicing at his heels. I use careful positioning to clear out the enemies in the middle, and when I hit the other engineer, I pop in and out of cover and pepper him with my shotgun until he's low enough to use reckless abandon and rush him with the sword. This is one of my fatal flaws in this game, or any game for that matter. I will throw strategy completely out the window if there's at least a 10% chance that I'll do something cool. Sound logic, tactics, and reasoning? Now we don't do that here. It's Riley reloaded. However, this goes well and I start the elevator, get harassed by a flock of birds, become a little too sword happy as I spam attack even after the last sign is dead. I then launch myself towards Savathun's ship. The burden of tribute encounter, the gathering of the glaive, and the outside 
side of the ship area go extremely well as this is the first time I'm well equipped with weapons that hit hard and sometimes match the shields of my enemy. It's been so long since I've tasted the power of my good gear. I've been but a meager pleb for ages. But even with that, having access to a couple of different weapons where I can just dive into fights is a considerable step up in these challenges. You know I've gone too deep when getting to use the stubborn oak is a godsend to <laughs> me. But I slice up the Hive Guardians, Kvostov and shotgun him in the second revive and deliver the cleanest of roundhouses you've ever seen. Finally cut the cord between his soul and the physical world. Then I use the good old Well of Radiance technique to kill the ogre by planting it at his feet and hacking it his nuts. You know, I had this whole bit lined up in the last room where I blow myself up after flawlessing the entire mission just to confuse Dosi. But I only had a sword in my last slot and the game doesn't have a seppuku option. Probably for the better because otherwise the story of my guardian would have ended at the Malfeasance quest. But I then get to the last room, whittle down Savathun with my trusty old Kvostov. And in her dying breath, in some sort of sick nightmare fantasy, she spawned in three more of herself, activating my most questionable of erections, solidifying both me and the fact that I beat the arrival flawlessly, wearing only white gear. In between missions, I get a curiosity in my mind and wondered how well this gun and gear would perform in the Crucible. Something seemed a bit funny to me about running around with these competitive players and watching them get got by some ass clown running around with a Kvostov. I hit around corners like a sneaky boy, so when they rounded it, they get hit with the stubbornest of oaks. It's hilarious that standing next to these units that obviously spent a lot of time handcrafting their style is this beautiful bastard. <laughs> I mean, just look at me. They wish they could capture even a fraction of my raw sexual energy as I stand there looking like I have no idea how I got here or who let me in. But even better than that, I was absolutely dunking on them all three games. Even though if I poke my head out, I get folded like a lawn chair. I was still slapping cheeks at 23 to 29 kills a match. I mean, just look at this brutality. But not being sidetracked any further, we load up the investigation. The first area goes really well as well. They may be thinking, Riley, how is this the challenge if you're steamrolling everything inside of these missions? Well, if it seems like too much of a good thing, it absolutely is, as eventually my light level will be extremely below where it needs to be to deal any damage, and this challenge goes from a walk in the park to getting ham-fisted every time I round a corner. I quickly clear the hive out of this intro area, get a radio comp from an unknown benefactor, and descend into the tunnels. Halfway through, I completely forgot about deep sight and straight up hurled myself into the abyss because looking before you leap is a poor man's quality. All that aside, in a desperate attempt to gracefully recover from my mistakes, I try to sword glide my way across the gap only to eat it big time. I resurrect, this time collecting the deep sight, then running through this beautiful hallway that I must always point out. God damn, Bungie knows their color wheel. I then hop onto my sparrow, which at this point I completely forgot that I had the starter sparrow that goes about as fast as Bungie making PvP maps, and I vaporize the enemies at the gate and move on to the hive light bear. In this encounter, you have to kill all the hive barrier guards in order to get the wizard to spawn in. During this, there is a war going on between them and the scorn, and for some reason, as soon as I walk in, the Scorn and Hive completely forget about their differences and work together to take me down. It was amazing to see the old adage of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. A beautiful display of fighting a more dangerous opponent, or at least it would have been if my armor wasn't made of paper mache. I take down the abomination and jump for the barrier guard, but because my armor is held together with elastic bands and Elmer's glue, the knight lays me clean out. But I swiftly return to pop a well and chop at his heels. I then slowly Kvosta of the last barrier knight and get ready for the wizard. I had a plan of popping a well at its feet and then just chopping at it until it dies, and all goes well when I initially place the well, but as soon as I go to crush the Hive Guardian's ghost, the situation quickly devolves. <laughs> Holy shit. They're eating me! But I bust out and manage to slice my way out of this cake, narrowly avoiding Space Jam Barrier Knight from slam dunking my skull into the pavement. I use distance I created from a tactical runaway and give the Barrier Knight the taste of the Golden Age Russia as I sentence him to death by Cosmodrome Fury. Drive both like a snail and a maniac on the way to Finch and beat the investigation with only white gear. The ghost is the last mission I deal damage in before the game decides that I'm not allowed to be happy. I sprint for the first fight in the mission, clear the little enemies in the opening section, and use tactics I learned in the Damage Traveler's Chosen Run in order to dodge the wizard's blasts in a textbook display of character progression. Returning the ghost to the light, we move on to the room that always gives me trouble whenever I enter any of these challenges. But in a breath of fresh air in a challenge like this, it isn't actually all that bad, as I have weapons that can deal with enemies at all ranges. That didn't stop me from dying a couple times, but I found the best strategy would be to race to the back of the room where the light bear and the hive knights are, and take them down as quickly as possible 
possible by using a well and slicing at them with a sword, then focusing on the enemies in the middle. I kill the last of the loosened brood and move on to the Scorn Walker. The Scorn have gotta be the most dangerous foe to me, as they usually do not play around, and with my armor having the protective strength of good strong cardboard means if I linger on one of their grenades for a little too long, it will drain my health extremely fast. And in the legendary campaign, enemies love to huck grenades at every second. Not only that, they have Scorn Raiders. It will drop me at Mach 8 from across the map if I so much as look at them funny. But I found a good spot to hold up was behind this rock as the walker can't seem to figure out how to shoot me, but I can slowly pick off at its legs from afar. After a little bit of time, I destroy the Scorn Walker by standing on top of it anytime I take down a leg and wryly unloading shotgun shells into its vital bits. I then kill some Scorn Crystal Guardians and descend into the well. The boss fight of this mission is one of my favorites as he consistently keeps you on your toes by chasing you down, making you have to quickly dodge and fire whenever you get the chance. That's not so bad on its own, but you have to deal with Bungie's spaghetti net coating causing the boss to instant transmission right in front of you and kick you in the huckleberries. If you so much as think you're safe for one minute, it gets a little bit more difficult. With that, I still managed to get him immune in this phase and thought, nah, I'm safe behind this wall. But the boss would toss you wad a wall of fire across the entire battlefield, murking me in my safe zone. Obviously, I can't be mad as this is clearly a skill issue, but I reload the fight using tactics I learned in the last challenge, utilizing the pus sacks to blind my enemies and slowly but surely whittle down the boss's health. And for the pure cinematic value, I line my stubborn oak up with his temples and splatter his brains all over the arena, beating the ghosts, wearing only white gear. I like these challenges because you never know when everything is gonna go to shit. Some of them it's in the beginning, and others it's a little ways in. But I have never had a mission put the boots to me more than the communion. The light level of my white gear that cannot be infused really starts to amber herd the bed at this point. But being one to soldier on and not think about the repercussions of my actions like a fucking nerd, I charge the first enemies in the area, and oh that's new! But I once again tap into my inner John Wick and lay waste to the enemies in the first section. The area with the tanks has a huge problem having two extremely strong Cabal Colossus, snipers and Cabal that are not afraid to rush you. If you pause for a second, they will put you down extremely fast. I ran into the base of the pyramid extremely confident and sling off a Nova Bomb the moment I see the Colossus. For my transgressions, as soon as I land, they break my Nico Nico kneecaps. At this point, they killed me about 10 times and I decided, okay, obviously what I'm doing isn't working. Marking one of the first times in Riley Reloaded history where I try a different approach instead of just ramming my head into that wall until it breaks. It's funny how quickly repeated deaths can break a man down when you thought you had everything lined up perfectly. This is the part where if I so much as think about poking my head around a corner, I'm already dead, but I switch to arc and get ready to push on. Using my Chaos Reach laser to clean up the Colossus and then get back to my rock where in the Damage Traveler's Chosen Run, I hid to deal damage. The only problem is, is that on Legendary, the enemies have a modifier that causes them to huck grenades like crazy, and they aren't inaccurate too. The Cabal are no joke when it comes to throwing these. After a good amount of time, and I mean a good amount of time as it takes me forever to kill even a couple of these enemies, I manage to take down some of the Cabal outside and move on to deal with the tank. I damage the jets on it to bring it down all while jumping to avoid rockets. I may hit with the damage of accidentally cutting your mouth while eating a chip, but staying on the move, I focus fire in the jets of the tank, and when the two front ones are blown off, I just lay into the top part to deal enough damage to bring it down, all while jumping to avoid rockets. Now when I say Bungie has pulled some bullshit moves on me in the past, never have I been clowned on this hard. I mean, just look at his shit! After fighting for about 30 minutes, sustaining perfection as one slip-up means you've been transmogged into a wet smear on the ground, this tank decides it's time to use some f Vex prediction engine level shit and fires a missile nowhere near where I am or where I was going to be, vaporizing any joy that once lingered inside of my body. <laughs> but I resurrect with a heavier heart, switch to stasis and charge the enemies. Even with my crowd control on, I was slipping real good. Damage was pitiful as I couldn't sustain it without taking a bullet through the skull, leading to many, many, many deaths.
I tried every trick in the book, but they just weren't working. But inside, I still held the mantra. Keep trying, Riley. It's only gotta work once. I then decided I should look if there was any other white weapons, because I only grabbed the stubborn oak. And I actually found that there was a white sniper rifle that dealt void damage, and a green rocket launcher. I have no problem switching my heavy out to another green, as there aren't any white heavies. This rocket launcher was a great help in clearing out the cabal, but even with my arsenal upgrade, I still got my nose caved in, repeatedly, until my 30th revive, and about two hours of fighting. But with the stubbornness of an oak, and sheer persistent willpower, I managed to beat the first encounter wearing only white gear. I should have known then and there that this mission was going to slap my titties around, and I was absolutely right. If only I knew that 30 deaths was nothing. After that last battle, with my new weapons and not being in a darkness zone, I was able to go wild, clearing rooms left and right with breakneck efficiency. The stairs were an easy clear, and when I reached the next room, I even used a tactic I learned from the no damage run by hiding in the back here behind these statues. The second toughest part in this run came when I hit the first boss encounter. The encounter has you having to deal with snipers extremely quickly if you want to survive, as one bullet is enough to put you down. The moment you see them, you have to have already put a bullet in them, otherwise they will take you down in a single shot, unless you're at the back of the room, where they can't reach you. There's also a lot of Cabal incinerators in the middle that will not hesitate to unleash a wall of fire upon you if you're caught in the open. I do, however, take solace in the fact that I have a void sniper rifle and all the incinerator's shields are void as well, meaning if I get to a safe spot, I can take them down pretty easily. But even with good position and quick reaction times, I still can't shake my inner warlock and boost glided off the cliff halfway through a try that was going really well, thinking, You have years of academy training! But in the end, I managed to fire my last rocket at the Imperial Deserter and completed the first boss. Now this room is where all semblance of sanity had left my body. I remember this mission being difficult on Legendary when I went through it with Survival Theory and Dicius Jin, being only slightly under power level. This time, however, I've got armor with the strength of a depressed gorilla, which cranked this mission up. This boss fight needs you to be perfect in order to complete it. One wrong move, and it's all over, and you're back at the beginning. I tried the tactic I used in my no damage run, but that was on normal difficulty, where the enemies don't go buck wild with grenades. Staying in one place was a death sentence, but thanks to having the stats of your average Redditor, I'm extremely slow and cannot move from cover to cover properly, meaning if I stick my head out and try to stay mobile and avoid fire, and do not have perfect jumps, I will get laid clean out. This was truly one of my toughest battles, even tougher than the Damage Traveler's Chosen run. I tried every trick in the book I had, switching my subclass and tactics at every corner, but no matter what I did, I just couldn't manage to complete it, leading to many, many deaths once again. And on my 69th run, I channeled every destiny bone I had in my body, achieving and entering the game flow state. It's like the Avatar state, but smells like Mountain Dew. <laughs> this was probably the most skillful I'd ever played, dipping and ducking and diving through every bullet, remaining in the move all while avoiding the boss and the little enemies that pour out from every single corner of this room. This was one of the first parts in a challenge run that took an insane amount out of me. The amount of times I had fallen right at the final stretch was staggering. This boss here broke me down as a person, but in the end, I managed to charge up my final power attack by combining my grenade with the hucking of the mightiest of Nova Bombs, finally ending the scourge of Valis Dralgur. It took a moment to think of all the broken bones my guardian must have suffered, all the vaporizations and bullet holes. If I needed a break, I knew that my character's goofy looking ass needed a moment as well. I mean, just look at all these engrams. My inventory is full up on blues as well, and the postmaster won't stop yelling at me every time I go to orbit. But with my suffering momentarily complete, I brokenly stumbled my way to the statue, communed with the darkness, and begged for the sweet release of death, because I know what's coming next. Everything I said about the mirror holds true to this day. In most challenges, it gives me brief respite before I dive back into the tough bits, and it's a relatively short mission I I can complete without too much issue. And while the enemies are tough, there's a lot of cover and I'm still able to deal damage to them, so this mission is just like another day at the office. I clear the scorn causing interference, take no chances in this room because I'm 100% sure that if I give enemies a second of breathing room, the scorn raiders will clown on me once again, which they absolutely do when I try to get up on this ledge later on. I slowly shotgun peek this abomination, taking a brief break to Nova Bomb the enemies on the right, and upon trying to do a finisher on the abominations, I get screamed, resurrect, and enter the boss room. But even though this mission is short, Bungie can't let me have anything, and when trying to fight the Scorn Raiders, they plant a bullet in my skull while I'm cowering in fear from their sheer might. The general principle here is the same as the one in the Traveler's Chosen run. Deal with the small enemies, then go for the boss in the middle when I get the chance. The only difference is, is that this time, I'm not being held back by challenge restrictions, and I'm capable of fully unleashing my true power. I can even make good use of the fountains of light that pour in from the ceiling, making this fight a cakewalk. I started slinging Nova Bombs off left and right, and I beat this boss like he owed me money. I didn't stop me from dying nine times, but I launch a final Nova Bomb at the boss, jump up and down, and have 
happiness, firing my shotgun like the Ooga Booga Caveman I am inside. Jojo pose next to Tiny Osiris and hit them with that Ginyu Force T pose as the mission ends. Every emote I do in this armor is a reminder that I have achieved the peak of Destiny fashion, and no one will ever compete. The cunning has me running past the first enemies in a mad dash at this point, as I have no idea how much damage I actually deal to my enemies. The good news is I'll soon find out that the scorn on the side aren't too bad, as I have the range advantage, can still damage them, and can pick them off from afar using my abilities and weapons. This green rocket launcher was a godsend, as the scorn like to have tons of enemies that will rush you, allowing me to deal with multiple enemies very quickly. But I clear the bridge and move on to where the abominations spawn, which aren't too big of a problem, as I can stand off to the side and just pick them off slowly. For some reason, this corrupted chieftain kicks the shit out of me, but I notice he's guarding a sweet, sweet exotic engram, and Papa Ryu will kill a god if it means there's so much as a chance at it dropping a purple. This chieftain, for some reason, though, was tough as nails, beat my ass for about a good five minutes, but I managed to take him down with a roundhouse kick, scrap the blue leg armor, because I thought it would mean that if I picked up the exotic engram, and all my armor slots was full except for one, I would get an armor that would drop in that slot. I was hoping that I'd get a better sacred filaments than the one I got in the last challenge, but to my surprise, it actually worked! Maybe for all the suffering I've endured during these challenges, the spirit of Joe Blackburn was silently resting his arm on my shoulder. Now let's check the roll on this bad boy. I mean, yeah, better than the last one I got, but a polished turd is... Still a turd. I descend into the bridge and try to enact my revenge on these enemies that I ran away from in the last challenge. But after killing one, they prove to be too much for me, since in this armor a slight breeze is enough to snap my bones, and I make a tactical retreat. I rush these scorn raiders, killing one, but pulling only the most expert of moves by sliding off the edge into the pit, then lower the bridge, nova bomb the abominations, and get ready to use my tactic on the boss of this region. The boss will one-shot me in this armor if only one of his sniper bolts manages to hit me. Getting him to the immune stage is easy enough, but whenever I try to deal damage to the lantern scorn that holds his immunity up, I usually get killed. Three Three shots from a scorn captain at this point is enough to kill me. After dying about 29 times, I found the best strategy was to shoot a nova bomb at the boss, hide up on my ledge with the white grenade launcher that has blinding grenades, offering me a chance to run around the arena without getting shot. I then killed the lantern scorn, and after about 45 minutes of painful fighting, I took down the boss. Normally in these challenges, I can just shrug off the damage of the Ahamkara, but upon poking my head out, he just vaporizes me. I'm just gone. The Ahamkara fight is a really neat one, but it's extremely easy in almost every challenge run that I've done. So I finish it off, blinding grenade the scorn at the top of these stairs and then launch a missile at it. You're not clowning on me this time. And drive all the way to the energy elevator at the end. I try to run past all the enemies but wind up getting put down as stubbing my toe in this armor is more than enough to kill me. I get back to the same spot and use my pike to destroy all the scorn in my way. That being said, I still take damage, hop off the pike, and use my pitiful recovery time to heal up. Once enough enemies are dead, I drop the most disrespectful of nova bombs on their head, ascend the elevator, and took yet another breather, beating the communion using only white gear. So far, I've been able to get myself through the missions using only skill. But now I realize that I'm reaching the end and by next mission the enemies are probably going to be immune to damage. I need a way to boost my power level without losing any of the white gear that I have. While scrolling through my comments, Jacob Player 2 said it's possible to make a new character, transfer over high level armor and pick up the Kvostov in the new light quest causing it to drop at the power level that you are at. The only problem is that I have three characters that I enjoy using and one of them has gotta go. I have a special attachment to my titan as she guided me through the campaign without taking damage and my warlock has been around since the literal dawn of destiny. Even if at the moment, he ain't exactly looking like it. So to me, the choice was obvious. My hunter had to go. And with tears in my eyes and a heavy heart, I sent him the DCV with Cade and the bad forcer memes. I probably should have put my gear into the vault before I did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I then created a new warlock, watched the opening cutscene because the nostalgia is just too perfect, the light piano music and the adventuring of the first ever fire team is just too beautiful for me. If only we knew how dark the Destiny universe was about to get. I then rose from the dead, used dim to transfer over blue armor I've gathered on my main warlock from this challenge, both giving me a power boost and hopefully freeing up some inventory space in an effort to stop the postmaster from harassing me, equipped it all and dashed for the sweet, sweet Kvostov. I watched the fallen skitter on the walls, something I don't see them do too much anymore, grabbed the Kvostov and to my surprise, it worked! Jacob, you genius! With my new Zenkai boost in hand, I equipped the Kvostov, but cooler, and sat pretty at 1390 power. With preparations made, it was finally time to take on the last chance. I mad dashed for the enemies inside, knowing in my heart that the Kvostov and I were ready to spill the blood of those that threatened to steal our sacred power. But with bated breath, I throw a grenade, and notice that even with my boost, I finally become too weak to continue, meaning that we would need to boost our power. There was no way around it. I knew this moment would come at some point in this challenge, as before I started
started this, I slapped on all white gear and loaded up the last mission to see if I could deal damage. And every enemy said, I think the fuck not with their question marks above their head. My thought was I needed to increase my power in the least influential way in order to deal the least amount of damage to this run. And the most beautiful solution came to me. Class items provide no stat bonuses until their master work. So if I switch my bond to a blue one with a higher power level, I could still continue my good work with a simple act of switching out my bond. Despite the fact that I was still nearing 100 light under power, I could now hurt my enemies. Now I'm not gonna say this mission was easy as around nearly every corner the cold embrace of death was tugging at my ankles in a desperate attempt to pull me under. The best way I can describe it is that I was basically just failing upwards the entire time. The whole way was laden with my corpses at this power level as the ability to one to two shot me and they sling grenades like madmen. And I gave it my all. Every fight required finesse and situational awareness to complete as one slip up would mean death. Take this encounter for instance. There's a sword bearer constantly chasing you. This is something they do throughout the entire mission and if you kill them and don't pick up the sword it will despawn and cause the knight carrying it to resurrect with it. This knight in any encounter of the mission has a bloodlust and will rush you. My strategy usually involves killing the knight and consistently picking up and dropping the sword to reset the timer on it but either way the sword will slowly leech ammo over time until it hits zero and despawns meaning the threat of losing the sword is always present until you use it for its main goal. I managed to beat the first room after a while and move on to where the loosened guardian is. With careful playing I kvost of him to death and rush his ghost to end the encounter and move on to what has easily become the toughest section in the game for me. This bridge spawns a legion of enemies that are always at the ready and usually have the range advantage. Being this weak means that a couple of the enemies are problematic enough, but when you're getting shot at from all sides by powerful enemies and have armor that will blow apart if someone near you sneezes, you have a recipe for many retries. Not only that, but because I'm underpowered, even my Nova Bomb has the stopping power of a nerf gun. If I was going to make it past this bridge, I needed to be on point. Every aspect of this encounter needed to be down to a science. The only problem is that I barely learned my shapes and have the memory of a goldfish. I fought extremely hard to get to the end. And at my 51st death, here I was, finally ready to kill the boss and end the eternal suffering. I launch my Nova Bomb at the boss and whiff a rocket, but recover and continue shooting. My heart was racing as it was finally about to come to an end. But as I went to lay down one of my healing riffs, this happened. You gotta be sucking me good through my jorts. Bungie, why? <laughs> why? I got crucible tactic because everyone knows a warlock is near useless when setting up a rift and wound up tasting the cruelest of AoEs. But anyway, I resurrect die a lot more. This just was no end to this one in sight. And when we finally arrive in my final showdown with the boss, hours had passed at this point because this bridge, this bridge doesn't play even when you do have it down to a science and permanently burned into your muscle memory. I shot from afar and killed the boss. There was no rejoicing this time. Normally, I celebrate with firing guns off into the air, but this time there was only silence. Here I sit, broken, Kvostov in hands, but we belong to the grind here and the Witch Queen needs slaying. So I fought my way up the tower, consistently getting my nipples twisted by every enemy on the way up. In the boss room, I fight like a demon dodging and firing left and right. The momentum of the last encounter was with me. There was no way that the boss was gonna even have a chance at stopping me. I was feeling very powerful at this moment. Death was knocking for Savathun's right hand and I was its messenger. But in a cruel twist of fate, as I fired my bullets, this happened. Yep, that's right. Not only am I contending with the enemies that can ninja kick me in the dick by so much as peek my head out around a corner, I also have to contend with my GPU. I bought an AMD GPU from Power Color as it had good reviews and was powerful, but owning this thing has consistently crashed my PC, but only in the most vital of moments. There could be thousands of things going on on screen, really complex images playing games in the highest graphical setting, but the moment I'm doing something important, my GPU goes, oh yeah. It's all coming together. This knocked the wind clean out of my sails, especially since I was doing so good. I restarted my PC and was further down than I was before, having to redo some parts. But thankfully, I had a system to fight the boss. Kill the acolytes when the boss spawns in, sling off a Nova Bomb and pop a rocket. Then quickly shoot her to get her to run off and defend my position as the Hive descend on me. The Hive Sword Bearer is present as well and he will chase you down. And when every enemy can kill you, you have to really be on your toes. I kill the Hive Knight, then I pick up his sword to deal as much damage as I can as this sword has the odd property of dealing a lot of damage. After that, it's a simple rinse and repeat. There is a problem in the second room, however. The boss will pop rifts every couple of seconds, even if they're already in one. This was extremely hard to deal with when I had the damage travelers chosen, as they would often heal past the damage I was able to deal. If I sustain DPS well enough, I could take down the boss. This time, however, even though my gun is automatic, I hit for way less damage. The boss heals way faster than I can contend with. The only thing getting me by at this point is abilities allowing me to gain progress, but they recharge at such a slow rate that this fight took forever. It's even 
worse that one wrong move can mean restarting the entire thing. I managed to make it to the boss room and right at the end I got caught on some uneven architecture and the wizard sends my ass into the stratosphere. But at least this fight is a little bit more predictable than the one on the bridge. Meaning getting back to the boss isn't as difficult. Which even though the only thing I was consistently doing was getting my ass kicked in this fight, I still managed to pull it off. Finally killing the wizard and sending its ghost back to the light. I once again hit them with that yoinky sploinky and beat the last chance wearing only white gear. Politely strolling through the courtyard on my geriatric scooter, I took a moment to think about what was coming. I've been getting obliterated at every turn. My glass, bones, and paper skin folding under the pressure. Even just being inside of this mission is an act of defiance at the expense of the Witch Queen. There's part of me that relishes these rides up to Savathun. Brief moments of reflection and the ass kicking that I've been receiving all throughout the entire week. It was eight years ago that I first rose from the Cosmodrome as one of the Traveler's righteous zombies. Eight years ago I cracked my knuckles and picked up my first ever Kvostov. And while Bungie and Destiny has had massive highs and lows, there's something beautiful in the way that while well, even though time has changed, and I did as well, Destiny stuck around through all the memories, friends, friends lost, and triumphs both in the game and out. My character stood the test of time. Here I stand at the ready to face the hive goddess of cunning and lies, Savathun the Witch Queen, as an equally formidable foe, the legend of Earth, Saladin's young wolf, the slayer of the Taken King and the hero of the Red War, ready to deliver poetic justice with the gun I held at the beginning, all those years ago in a world that I didn't understand. To my surprise, I'm still able to deal pretty good damage in this mission and haven't had to equip another blue. My bond in the 1550 power Kvostov is more than enough to carry me through this mission, but enemies are nearing their peak strength against me. I am extremely easy to kill, but I persevere across the bridge and begin the first encounter. This encounter was extremely tough, causing me to have to use my entire arsenal and exceptional positioning and firing in order to win. After many deaths, this was the path that I settled on. First, jump off the side to the left. Second, kill the Acolytes, then Nova Bomb the Wizard. Jump through the portal and launch a charge grenade at the enemies around the crystal to bring them in the center, and use blinding grenades to provide a safe way to fight the Hive Knight. Hit them with Kvostov until they're weak enough to finish her, and then clean up the Acolytes lights with my automatic. Destroy the crystal and launch a rocket at the enemies that spawn in behind me, finishing the night as soon as possible. Then hammer the ogre in this room with a rocket and blinding grenades, then switch to a sniper rifle and clean up the shrieker. Then kill the acolytes, destroy the crystal and plant a grenade at the spawn section because as soon as you destroy the crystal, acolytes will spawn in. Snipe the shrieker and then nova bomb the enemies in the middle of this crystal room. Destroy the crystal and move on to the second part. The second area will more or less repeat, with the only difference being rocket the knights as they have arc shields and hit them with anything you have on you until they're finisherable. Then it's a as simple as killing the little enemies below and focusing the boss when you get the chance. Learning all these techniques took me about 34 deaths as I usually whiffed when I got to the boss because for some reason this boss was extremely active and had the health and the heals to back up their metal. But I killed the wizard, disrespected their ghosts, and took a long breather before moving on to the outside lift. I knew that fighting these enemies would take forever and at this point I am extremely fatigued and knew my most monumental challenge lay just up that lift. I decided to run away, firing off a blinding grenade at the ogre, but he shakes it off and just manages to catch me before before I'm finally free. I then say, I'm gonna do it again and almost fall off the cliff, just barely make it up launching the last of my blinding grenades off in their direction, and stand before the giant bell that leads to the Witch Queen. Here I am once again, once more into the breach with nothing but white armor and the Kvostov. Hours of fighting had gone into this challenge. I've died more in this challenge than I have in months of playing Destiny, but here I stood, ready for the final showdown. I plant my flag and race up the stairs to confront the Witch Queen. With my extreme damage taken, I need to be extremely agile in order to take her down as a single volley or hit from her is enough to kill me. Even the ambient damage of the Nova Bomb will one-shot me upon touchdown. I was jumping from bush to bush, firing at her as much as I could. There is a problem, however, that when Savathun gets low enough, she spawns in an army of ogres and acolytes that can two-shot me at this point. I tried to hide up here to deal with them, but Savathun just kept slinging Nova Bombs until she managed to catch one on the side, killing me. I kept trying my best, but there were so many deaths every single time I got her low enough. It got to the point, though, that the only time I would die is when the minions would spawn in and split my attention. Savathun would take full advantage advantage of that by dropping a Nova Bomb on my head. But determined not to let this get the better of me, I devised a strategy after many, many deaths. I basically just hid in the side room shooting at her. She may attack at first, but eventually her AI will go all stupid and she may sling off one attack every now and then, but for the most part you're free to just whittle down her health. The same cannot be said for when she spawns in the Hive Light Bearers, one of which is a wizard that will heal and take forever to take down. I post her up in the side of the pillar and fight the wizard slowly but surely. They still throw grenades up here, meaning if you're not cautious, you will get hit. But I jump down and launch a Nova Bomb at her and go for the finisher. In my panic, as there were other guardians slightly nearby that will put me down extremely quickly, I pulled the smartest thing I've done yet. I wound up forgetting about her ghost. Goldfish memory strikes again and she winds up rezzing, meaning I will have to restart the fight with the hive light bears. I took out the frustration I had at myself on this pillar and got my head back in the game. After
after a while of fighting from this position, it suddenly gets quiet. A little too quiet. Which is odd, as I still have two other Hive Guardians left to kill. And this is where Bungie bungies me once again. Something happened in my game, and it definitely broke the mission. I looked everywhere for the Lucent Brood, but they just vanished! It meant that it was time to restart the entire fight. Once again, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I shot at the Traveler and gave up for a good minute, just sitting there, and taking a breather for the ages, before launching a rocket into my heels to restart the fight. This time, I finish off the last Hive Guardian, shoot a Nova Bomb at Savathun, and begin our battle. I'm dodging like a madman and once again take a position in my little bunker. I repeat everything that I just did, kill Savathun and get ready for the final showdown with the Witch Queen. I reload my Kvostov and Shepard's Watch and race to the fight. In this challenge, you better scramble like an egg before you get folded like an omelet, as I'm getting exploded from every angle and having to stay on the move is the only way you can assure your life. If I stick my head up for a second, I'm already dead, but thankfully the fight hasn't become a darkness zone yet so I can freely die as much as I want. I get killed over and over and over again but manage to stumble my way into the Threadcutter Wizard's towers and kill them. The second time I come through here, Savathun's projections are lurking and avoiding thralls while also avoiding her laser beams is tough enough. It got to the point where I abused my immortality by just slinging myself at her into the abyss with a shotgun, hoping that I could deal more damage. But I showed her the truth and got ready for the real challenge. Now we enter the darkness zone. This is where Savathun is at her strongest and one slip up against Savathun or her minions is enough to send me all the way back to the beginning of the fight. I'm so weak at this point that a single one of Savathun's hunter blades is enough to kill me and acolytes and wizards are everywhere. If you kill two of the Threadcutter wizards, you can get a pretty sizable damage buff compared to normal that you can use without a timer. I mean, sure it takes longer to kill Savathun, but the wizards can be extremely deadly when your armor is barely hanging together. My thought was that I would collect Threadcutter and just try to fight Savathun, but no matter what I did, this collection of enemies would just wind up killing me over and over again. I even developed a system that consisted of launching a grenade, hitting it with a Nova Bomb, and slinging a rocket in the opening room, dealing as much damage as possible, and then running to the left to take down the wizards in sort of a U pattern. But Savathun has aimbot or something, and you can't sit still, otherwise the ambient damage from her lightning or Nova Bombs will vaporize you instantly. I've done many challenges, but at this point, I've been fighting for hours. I was tired, and in a moment of weakness, Riley broke first. I put down my white gear and switched to blue so I could at least tank a hit from Savathun. This may not seem like a big deal, but at this point, you guys know me. Stubborn as an oak, willing to do whatever it takes at any cost of. But for the first time in one of these challenge runs, it got to me. Sometimes the hero bites off more than he can chew when faced with insurmountable odds. But no matter what I tried, my little clown-looking ass just couldn't figure it out. The pieces were all there, but for some reason I had no idea how to put them together. Oh, and this worked. This worked too well, as after playing like a sweat for the longest time, Savathun barely stood a chance once I put myself on par with the light level of the mission. I took to the air and launched the meanest of Nova Bombs, but as I slung the Nova Bomb from the depths to the void, the void stared back, showing me what I feared the most. And as Savathun lay dying in front of me, I did not beat the Witch Queen, wearing only white gear. But this is not where the story ends, as something was stirring inside of me. This victory was hollow. That simply would not stand with me. Some of the brightest and best people I've ever known in my life once told me, Riley, if you've given it your all, then that's good enough for me. I've only ever done what I can, and sometimes the cards don't roll in my favor. But even with that, folding is usually always my last option. But at the end of the day, your best is always worth a shot, and I knew I could do so much more. Sometimes, all you need is a breather. That's right, Chuckle Nuts! It was all just a dream sequence. None of that has happened yet. Riley re-retconned. Yeah, I'm opening up multi-timeline shit inside of a Destiny 2 challenge video, adding way more complexity than I probably should do this. There was no time to lay down and accept defeat. I didn't cave under the pressure when I was repeatedly getting slapped silly by Savathun in the no damage run. I didn't put away my Traveler's Chosen in the damage Traveler's Chosen run, and I'll be damned if I disrespect the legacy of the Kvostov. I sprinted at Savathun, killed her Threadcutter wizards, and got Threadcutter too. I then found the perfect spot to fight her. She consistently dips in and out of this region, but you can use the big pillars to block her quick attacks, and as long as you have your ears peeled for the Nova Bomb sound, you can generally know when it's coming. As long as I'm agile on my feet, she actually can't hurt me here. The only move that does have a chance of killing me is the Storm Trance wave she sends out, but I found that you can easily get out of its range if I just run to the back wall of the arena. And I was actually dealing pretty good damage and making way better pace than I did in the Damage Traveler's Chosen run. But in true Riley Reloaded fashion, I left my cover in a 10% chance to do something cool and threw the mother of all Redemption Nova Bombs. And while it may not have killed her, it did give me a significant lead, and I managed to run back to my post and finish the challenge in the proper way. What I would like to think as a fitting end to cap off a legacy. And I polished off Savathun with the Kvostov. I sprayed the air in immense joy because this was one of the toughest challenges to date. I mean, just look at my guy over there at the ending cutscene, huffing like, kill me. But with Savathun dead and the Traveler back in the cradle of humanity and my good work complete, I beat the Witch Queen with only white gear. 
Thank you for watching. This one was an extremely ambitious project, and while I know I said I would get back to the regular style of content, something inside of me keeps saying, go bigger, Riley. So if you enjoyed yourself and liked the video, maybe give your boy a subscribe. It's honestly amazing to me how much this little channel has grown in the past little while, as for the longest time, I've been making videos to an empty audience. About three years. But in every video, I do my best to make something that's entertaining, and I'm just glad that everybody is enjoying this sort of stuff. It really does mean a lot that everyone enjoys my shitty little jokes. But honestly, thank you for watching. I've been Riley. Stop making me do this shit! I don't want to do this no more! But thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.